Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the AJ Show. It's your boy, AJ Red. Me. I'm back tonight to discuss the marital medicine episode and the foolery in addition to uh, Heavenless Live I just saw uh, not very long ago. Y'all want to discuss it? Fuck it. I do. It's the AJ Red Show. Starring me, AJ Red. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into it. Well, what's going on? And welcome back to another episode of the AJ Red Show. It's your boy, me, AJ Red. Again, I'm back. Like I said before, I can't get my fucking hair act right. I'm back again with another episode of the AJ Red Show. I'm going to take a couple of days off. <clears throat> the weekend, more than likely, because I was a little tired, a little pressed. You know, a little rundown. I had to get myself together. But... Let me first start by thanking those of you who have added yourselves as a subscriber to the page. Um, newcomers, please like and subscribe if you have not already. Share this video and all the others I have uh, in my portfolio. Also, make sure to um, comment down in the comment section and let me know what you guys think about each conversation or each video, each show that we have. Which again, I told y'all at some point we're going to do this live show. When I get y'all to, when I get a little something going, when I can figure out how to get these fucking notifications sent out. For those of you who have already subscribed, liked, and shared, I appreciate you. Like I said all the time, more than you even know, it's because of you. I keep doing this, um, and I'm loving it more and more. So thank you guys so much that have already liked, subscribed, and shared. Um, and the commenters, man, let me tell you, I'm doing my best, like I told you, to comment I respond to everybody individually to make sure I, I send out individual love uh, as well as group love. But thank you all so much. So anyway, I don't want to be too long. Jumping right into the episode of Married to Medicine Season 9, Episode 8. So basically, I I stopped making these episodes so long. I see they're picking up and everybody's loving them a little bit more. But this one I'm going to shorten down because I'm going to add a little bit on to the end because like I said in the preview, of this show tonight, um, I had the pleasure of watching Heavenly Kimes on her live on YouTube as well. And let me tell you, Heavenly's still crazy as a motherfucker. Ain't nothing I believe is gonna change. But uh, let me do say uh, my condolences. I know it's you know eight nine months later, whatever have you. But in the spirit of being human and caring for one another, regardless of what's going on on the show or uh, that's being Married to Medicine or the AJ Red Show. I want to extend my deepest con uh, condolences to um, Heavenly Kimes and her family in the untimely passing of, I want to say untimely passing, but they knew she was going to pass, but in the passing of her mother. So I do, I'm so sorry to hear. Um, but jumping into the episode, let me say this. Um, I jump right in, you know, pretty much where they were on Anila and Kieran. Karen basically said, okay, look, Anila started saying that she can't take care of these goddamn kids. They running her crazy. She can't sleep at night. She can't wake up at 4 30 in the morning and take that um long yard of a wiener that she claims Kieran has at 4 30 before he goes to work and sets him up real good and send him off order to the office, weak in his knees, but strong in his head, and happy on the face. Um, she's just complaining about so much and how she needs so much help, and now she's calling up on um her crazy ass mama. Let me tell y'all something. I honestly, I'm going to say, y'all see it how y'all want to. Got to fix this shit where it's right. Y'all see how y'all want to. But me personally, I agree with Kieran. Even with my own parents coming to my house, especially a, a fucking house of that magnitude, any of my family members, I know how my people are. We got to set some rules in this bitch, some Ten Commandments. Please don't be trampling all over my marble floors. Please don't be wiping your crawfish hands all over shit when you eat. The man asked for simple stuff. He asked for shit. Honestly, her, her parents should already know as being older people in their 60s uh, having some kind of table manners because who in the hell goes and eats and wash their hands, not wash their hands before, let alone after um, they're done with going to somebody's refrigerator or fixing a meal or nine times out of ten, you know, the kind of shit they be over there eating. They had a whole goddamn bull or cow or something come through the house to bless it, a billy goat or something come through that motherfucker. And at the same time, the bottom line is, is this for me? Is there's COVID? There's monkeypox, and I don't know where the fuck they're traveling it from. Were they traveling it from another state here, over here in the states, or they're traveling it from um, Ouija Ganamon over here? You know where they're from? 
or somewhere like that. I'm not sure. But the bottom line is, you all are traveling, whether it be by flight, by car, whatever have you. The bottom line is, we have small children here. I am a physician. It may be ocular, but I'm pretty sure he's he's well-rounded in um, uh, making sure of, of sanitation and shit like that. And basically, he's only asking a, a few things which they should already know and have as guests clear hospitality. But the mama, I didn't think the daddy was such an asshole as well, but he's a, he's a dick too. They, they want to show up at the door. They got so many motherfucking bags. They don't know they, they don't know when they're going home. I don't think the parents even know when they're going home. <clears throat> even Anila made the same assumption. They got so much shit like they just moving in and by the end of the episode, it seemed like there was been uh, building a mother-in-law suite or something for them. I don't know, but we'll put that on hold right quick on ice to see what that brings for the next episode because I want to take y'all too fast because I don't want to go too fast my goddamn self. But with the rules, you know, wash your hands, you know, pick up after yourself. How the fuck can you come live in my multi-million dollar mansion and you got shit all over the place? You know, uh, cow shit, uh, 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 braised billy goat crumbs and shit all over the floor, oxtails and carrying on and whatnot. We don't, no, fuck no, we don't come for that kind of bullshit. You need to straighten yourself out and go govern yourselves accordingly. I don't know what y'all do over there in Ashwagandawan, but over here in Kieran's house, my house, you know, I understand where Kieran was coming from. Where he's coming from. Wash your goddamn hands. You can't wash your hands enough. Especially with all the diseases. And that's universal precaution. That's the first motherfucking thing you want to wash because it touches everything else on your body. And it feeds your fucking face. So why not wash your hands? They got into this whole thing about, you know, how, how they should take care of the kids. The bottom line is this. You took care of us one way. Me, Ma, and Papa. Bottom line is, I'm asking this for my kids. This is what I set up for them, and this is the structure I have for them. Please, if you're going to help me, stick to that. If not, I go hire a bitch that gets paid to listen to do what I say do, and once you don't do it right, I fire her ass and find somebody else, or his ass and find somebody else. But they were like, well, I, out of the gate, we just got here, and now we're arguing. It wouldn't be a fucking argument if you were just, a, a, just bend to the rules. Clean up behind yourself, because apparently them folks is pretty fucking nasty. They don't like to clean up behind themselves. And apparently, Anila's not making enough money. I don't know, I guess, on the Housewives or in her blogging. Because I still don't fucking believe she paid for no half a million dollars worth of furniture in that big-ass motherfucking house. Y'all tell that to somebody else. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to side with Heavenly on that. I don't think she's, she, she blogged a, a fucking half a million dollars worth of furniture in the house. But the bottom line is your parents ain't put a fucking dime over up in there. And if you can agree with some things about your parents with your husband when it comes to Kieran and how they act and move throughout the house and how they should be respecting this man's palace because over where they come from, that's their kingdom. Over where y'all are at over here in Atlanta is his kingdom. He makes sure his kingdom is clean, polished, and all that shit and paid for. So how the fuck you gonna come down here and tell this man how to run his mammy motherfucking house? I don't understand. And I need she needs to get on board. Um, Talia was getting on my motherfucking nerve, as usual. She just as bad as Anila. I agree with what I saw on the live. I think with Heavenly, she was they were saying something about her and Talia need to be friends. I, I take that back. I don't agree. I think Anila and Talia found each other in the perfect spot of their life. They both just want to be tag alongs and you know want to show up to the thing and rip the man and all this different shit. When it comes to the man's opinion, if it's disagreed, you know, if, if they don't agree upon it, it's a problem for them because they're not getting what they want which is fucking ridiculous. I don't understand this happy wife, happy life shit. That's why a lot of motherfuckers is getting left in the dust now. If you want a motherfucker like I tell you at the end of my videos, don't ask nobody for no shit you ain't about willing to give. Don't ask nobody to make you fucking happy. You should be happy on your own and willing to contribute to theirs and them likewise. So with that being said, tell you to get up off a motherfucking Humpty Dump and find a better job or another job in addition to the Real Housewives, uh, I'm sorry, shit, the uh, Marriage to Medicine show because... Clearly, a lot of these other women have money on their own and not just from the show. This this show money on here is just pocket change for some of them, especially like uh, Jackie and Simone and probably even Contessa. And fuck, at this point, heavily with Dr. Damon on her side and her flipping properties the way she doing. Here, like I say, Tony to get up off of that thing and go on up over here to uh, Heavenly's house and reunite with Heavenly Hood. Huh? And this dip, uh, dipstick over here, this uh, double D's and dips right here. Well, it ain't really double D's, but... Uh, ascension A's and absent minded need to get up, go over here, and sit over here to Heavenly's house. As ignorant as Heavenly's acting, I mean, like she said on her live, fuck, 
She asked Squad to show the fuck up and help her out with the show. She's like, bitch, I'm the only one carrying the show. I'm the only bitch showing up giving these ratings what they want. Giving them good mess, good, you know, good, good, uh, cat fights and all this shit. Keeping up the, the fool out line and the fuckery with the other girls. You the only one standing up in the back holding Mason's motherfucking hand to my the school bus ride and all this different shit here. Over there cooking all them goddamn meals for Miss Mary and Lil Mason. Uh, having to say, meet her down to the goddamn production room and figure the thing out so y'all can get some fucking credits to make sure y'all will be sitting on the fucking shelf when y'all go to film for next goddamn season and we sitting around waiting to try to see if y'all gonna come out on the goddamn, on the, on the telly. So, Kawhi, get your ass up off of that thing and go on over there to that girl's house and, uh, help that girl carry this shit. Talia, you need to get up and make an appointment. You and, um, Ascension A and absent-mindedness, y'all need to get up and go over to this girl's house and, and take that financial class. Because Toya keep flipping motherfucking houses anyway. I'm pretty sure that's why Eugene, like, he about to be mad up in the next segment and about ready to leave her motherfucking ass in the dirt because he tired of all her fuckery and all that yakety, 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 yakety. Apparently, he was one of them ones, too, that was believing strongly in happy wife, happy life. And now look where, look where it has led Eugene. It has led Eugene to the point of this big mouth yuppie over here on the goddamn TV screen, not just last season, but also this season, talking about how small the man's dick is. Talking about how the man belongs to the small dick committee. All this other extra bullshit. Me personally, Eugene, shout out to you. My personal thing is that my whole focus is, in my opinion, is personally I would have went on here and divorced the motherfucking ass the minute the motherfucking shit aired. Bottom line is, don't get up on no goddamn platform talking about my dick unless you're going to say something nice about it. And she ain't even call it a dick, she call it a, a penis. Penis is don't ain't the same thing as dick. That's not the same thing. Those are two different things. There's dingling, there's penis, and there's dick. Period. And we all, I, if I got to categorize them for you, then you need to go, go check the shit out for yourself. Maybe I'll give you a class or something on this shit later. My hair is really bothering me. I fucked around and did some shit to it and take a shower and I just left it like that. But anyway, at least you know I'm clean. I took a bath of my ass and water. But... She need to get up over there and find out how to flip them houses from heavenly and find out something to do because sitting around on this show, kicking up dust and giving a motherfucker instead of talking about this man's dick, well, this man's uh, tattoo actor dingling or whatever on his camera, is not going to cut it. And you started bitching upside this man's motherfucking head about him not having enough time with the kids and all this bullshit. Yeah. The bottom line is, again, get up off of that thing. Take your motherfucking ass down there to the unemployment office. And whatever little degree you got, y'all drop down in the comments to help me understand because y'all ain't never did that shit yet. If anybody knows the skinny on what this one here really does behind the scenes other than hold that goddamn peach, I think somebody said she went to school for education. Me personally, I wouldn't want Toya teaching any of my kids any goddamn thing. Um, and maybe that is what she does. Maybe that's why she stays at home with the kids and actually homeschools them. I don't know, but drop down in the comments. Let me know if you know for sure. But the bottom line is she need to take her motherfucking ass down there to Georgia Workforce and let them hook her up with a job over that education to go to school, or at least be an online school teacher and put her kids and enroll them in that same school district so she can keep an eye on them at home, teaching their shit or do something like that, or keep a tutor around or something or another. If you're going to spend Eugene's money, at least spend it on something more motherfucking wise than Fendi, Gucci, uh, or Louis Vuitton, or trying to buy the next biggest, bestest motherfucking house in the neighborhood or beside one of your friends there on the cast. But she really got up under my skin, getting to my motherfucking nerd. This man is taking a moment to himself, sitting out on the patio, having a little sympathy, looking at the game, trying to have a little time in his set while she's saying, oh, he works 12 hours and he sleeps 10. Well, I guess so, because you fucks the shit out of him with the, with the dang lane for about three, four hours and he ain't getting very much rest down to the house. He got to go work 12 hours to pay these goddamn bills and all this shit you keep running up on the credit cards about to put y'all back in the fucking red when it comes to the finances. You more like a financier instead of a fiance. You doing too fucking much. Now the man got to get up Come up in the goddamn house for a situation you could have easily sat down and talked to your son and saw real quick and brought that shit to Eugene at another later date at a different time when this man had some time to woo side get some of this motherfucking stress off his goddamn back from saving the motherfucking world over here at the ER. But no, she couldn't handle the shit about the boy going out here and being accused of stealing something. Listen, I understand the severity of it. This is a very tumultuous time. This is a very strenuous time. When having these young boys out here being accused of different shit, especially when it comes to something like stealing amongst the community of white friends. I get it. But within your household, you have to manipulate that shit. And what's that word I like? It's a funny word. Um, finagle shit. In your, <laughs> you got to finagle the shit around in your house the way it works best for that man that goes out there and make this motherfucking bread and brings it in. Not by just a fucking loaf, bitch, but by the truckloads. This man is back in the fucking bunny bread truck up to the goddamn house. 
every other week and taking care of you and your children and moving out here, there, and everywhere. So how dare you even get mad about the goddamn U-Haul joke? But I digress. She pulls the man in. Well, you ain't got no time and all this different shit. You ain't spend no time with the boys. You got to work 12 hours, sleep 10 hours and all this shit. But never listening to the fact that she nagging the fuck out of him at, uh, at 1,300 hours and he going to sleep around about um, 900. It, it don't make no sense. You need this man to solve every goddamn issue. You want to let the man lead on issues when it comes to the children, but you can't be bothered. You want to include him on that shit, but you don't talk to him before you go down there and talk about his peck of wood up on the screen in front of the Bravo people and in front of us, the world, and your girlfriends. That's some treacherous shit. And me personally, again, I will say, and I repeat it to the end, I would have divorced Toya as a motherfucking ass by now. If Eugene, if you ain't on your way to file the paperwork, listen, pick a Scott Adams, file, put it on filing papers. Send him over there. Because she full of bullshit. Look at choir. Keep telling y'all these motherfucking shows ain't, ma ain't made for no mess. We, we say that shit all the time. But it will be just fine if you all a pre pre uh, um, present yourself as a united front. It sort of looked like that in the beginning with Toya and Eugene, but she took a whole motherfucking left somewhere in Albuquerque and left Eugene shook like a bowl of jello in Compton or the Bronx some motherfucking well. But the bottom line is she disturbing this man's peace that he gets very seldomly to hit him up with this bullshit here. So now Eugene got to sit and take the same time to take the conversation and have with little Avery that she could have fucking had. And, and, and kind of, you know, got down to Eugene later on fucking with that man. Um... Heavenly on um, going through menopause. I told y'all, for every woman, menopause is not the same. Some ladies breeze through menopause and damn, they don't even know they, they are there or they may get mild symptoms or some shit like that and have an inkling and not knowing have to go to the doctor to find out for sure. But there are some women that have their motherfucking high flashes. Let me tell you, they can be living in Colorado or Michigan somewhere. It can be uh, 16 below zero and I found some of them Baby, let me tell you, they have a motherfucking uh, internal furnace. For some reason, they can be outside and still motherfucking sweating. They will freeze your motherfucking jingle bells off. Um, them kind of folk you can't be hanging around when it's summertime uh, or even wintertime when it comes to them being able to control no air conditioning or no shit like that. For any of you men that got women's this, wives and all that different stuff that's going through mental pause, uh, my prayers are with you. I sympathize with you. Um, just leave the house for a little while when that time goes down. Give her a little something, send over there to Jackie or somebody and let them take care of that. But like I said before, then finding out that uh, Heavenless Mom is on hospice, which I'm not going to say she should have spoke that out. But honestly, that's, I guess, something you want to keep private. Um, you know, you're in your feelings. You're trying to figure this thing out. You're trying to see if it's going to get better. You're trying to see which way, you know, this thing is going to turn. So I definitely understand that keeping that to yourself on the hush. Um... Talked about Anita's parents. They already a pain in the ass. They get on my fucking nerves. They do too fucking much. They really did piss me the fuck off, y'all. They, 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 oh, it's like the nerve of them. I don't know what all they got showing them with them curtains on. His mom, her mom wearing them curtains and shit. I know that's they, they, I know that's their thing. And that's my motherfucking joke. Take it or leave it. If you don't like it, then swipe left. Keep it moving. That's where I'm at with it right now. Because if you don't know me by now, <clears throat> you never will. But mama coming through there with them goddamn curtains on and shit, acting a goddamn fool to my what she's not going to do and this and that and the third. It was just getting on my nerves. Cecil and Simone's dinner over at the house to discuss the book uh, and to get opinions from some of the other seasoned um, marriage, married couples. Uh, I honestly do not. I think Simone knew from the get-go not to be coupling these two bitches together at this present moment. Um... And while I'm, in, <clears throat> while, I'm, while I'm talking about that um, that part of the episode, let me just also further mitigate. I watched, again, Heavenly Show probably a couple of hours ago live on YouTube. And um, in this episode, she mentioned about what well, in her live, she mentioned about the episode where she and Damon was actually kind of already pissed with one another having a conversation about with her mom being placed on hospice. She wanted her mother to come and live with her and have our final days there with her. But Dr. Damon felt it would be too much on her um, dealing with that, you know, with her working activity and different things like that. But she did say she was willing to have a nurse over and all this different stuff. But it, I guess it wouldn't have been the same as a family member being there with her um, in the moment of, you know, when the Lord went on ahead and called her home. So Heavenly said that she went ahead and agreed for her, one of her older sisters that was currently working at home, working from home 
the sister said that she would take her to her home, you know, and keep, keep her over there with the hospice nurse and stuff coming over there and taking care of her, you know, and uh, Heavenly said she agreed to take care. I don't know if all of the calls, the majority of the calls, but she said her mom also had insurance. So that absorbed a good, a good bit of the cost uh, also. But in that dinner, they had just left the house having that discussion. So it was already kind of heated, she said, between she and Damon. So getting to Cecil's um, and Simone's dinner, shit pretty much immediate, went, immediately went left. I'm going to go ahead and side with Heavenly on this one. I'm going to chalk this up to Contessa was being a dick. Contessa, you was being a real bitch. Um, and I ain't saying a real damn, you was being a real ignorant bitch. Um, and, and I don't even say that about Contessa, but she was being an ignorant bitch. The reason I said it because the simple fact of this man is still in the, in the process of cooling off, but trying to still keep his wife in tune. And like Heavenly said on her live, she should have shut the fuck up when daddy asked her to shut the fuck up in the first place. And let me just say, I agree 110% because the way she spoke it, is the way I would have felt with it if it was my significant other and you argue with somebody and I say, babe, just leave him alone. Just just chill. Just leave, <laughs> let, 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 it, let it alone. You know, leave, leave him alone. Let it go. Stop talking to him. It's not me trying to control you until you shut the fuck up and do what I say because I don't want to see this go any further. Part of it is that. But it's part of it that is if this person themselves or probably their significant other or any other motherfucker in the room, ultimately, I'm going to be the bitch to defend you to the death. So with that, to keep my sanity, my life, my freedom, I'm asking you to help me keep all of that with a simple, you know, cuss the bitch out in the car and tell me all about it. I'll listen to it. But right now, don't egg that on because that's pissing me off and I'm already pissed. And to see somebody, now I'm mad with you, but to see another bitch jump up and whoop your ass, because I know you're down to my attention, you can't fight. But another bitch to drag you through this goddamn living room up under this diamond, dine, uh, dining room table around this braised duck or this goddamn lamb chop and shit everywhere. I'm asking you to chill so that I don't have to get out of character and possibly say something to this woman or even her husband or his husband, whoever the fuck it is, that is coming to their aid because now the shit is up there because now I'm on your side. We a united front and I'm finna fuck up the thing for everybody. So I understand that. So ladies, gentlemen, when your significant other asks you to stop arguing with a bitch, it's not we trying to tell you what to do. It's that we trying to keep ourselves out of prison. You know, because we probably have a tendency to snap and wring a bitch neck like a wild chicken in the backyard at Fresh Farm somewhere. So we just asking. We just asking. But moving on, Contessa just kept feeding into why Damon was trying to ask a, a husband to heavenly, quietly but uh, respectfully um, kind of tame his marriage and tame his wife and keep her on the respective side of things. And to where, you know, it wasn't going to be all this confrontation and blow up, as I just um, uh, just mentioned before. But Contessa from the other end of the table is constantly saying, yep, right, you're talking about, you're talking about heavenly, because you're not talking about me, you're talking about heavenly. Then she also, which was, which pissed me off, because like I said, anybody gets into it with Dr. Damon, including heavenly. Bitch, if you make Dr. Damon mad, I don't even know this man personally, have never met him a day in my life, ain't never spoke on the phone with him. But I've seen this man in his character. I feel like he's like Greg. Now, Greg, Greg Lee was a little bit quicker to get off the lid. But Damon is a very subtle and a very uh, level-headed man. He speaks his thoughts in a very eloquent, eloquent way. And, you know, uh, a, a way where there's not, motherfuckers ain't confused. For you dummies and for you educated ones, let me make this shit plain. And for you to give him slack, it's like it's something totally different. And I did kind of feel like maybe she was disrespecting Damon and trying to keep the shit going. But again, now you about to activate Scott. You know, if, if Damon says the wrong thing or he, he uh, Scott feels like the wrong thing and said the Contessa out of context, that activates Scott. So now we, I, we all got it. We all be some fight motherfuckers in here this evening, like Vera say. So with that, with that, you know, being said, I'm glad he did the the, the right thing and told told his wife, you know what. You already pissed me off. This bitch over here pissing me off, but I can't do nothing about her. That's her man over there. They, I let them work that out. But as for me and you, we got to get them going. We got to go with five fuck around there and pop off and some shit got to happen. So they ended up leaving, getting the fuck on up out of there and, and having a whole debacle. Uh, Heavenly and Contessa had a whole fucking fit on once another talking shit. They went on outside. Damon threw her motherfucking ass up in the truck. And apparently Cecil went out there to see Dr. Damon off. You know, and make sure he was feeling right in his mind. But 
that heavenly sitting behind him in the car like a damn five-year-old waiting for daddy, waiting for daddy to get in the car and drive her home because she couldn't play well with the other girls down to the table. Same thing Scott should have been doing. Check your woman. If you want to get in and, and check about some shit, Scott, you should have checked that shit and told her to cool the fuck out. Talking about she got the same credentials as Dr. Damon. Listen, be that as it may, the bottom line is if that's the case, you should have had the same amount of motherfucking sense as Dr. Damon and use your professional side and, and bow the fuck down and let that shit go and let that man say his shit and get his wife in shape. And then you can laugh in his bitch face. Ha ha he he. I bet your daddy got that ass in shape. Not that night, but another night. You could have laughed that shit off. But you wanted to go over for overkill, so the shit went another way. Dr. Dame went on through, what's the name of the truck, through heaven and the truck, told heaven and look, just don't fucking talk to me for 10 minutes. Because I got to cool off. Because you and this bitch done got my nerve ran high. Um, it was funny with Cecil with that non-disclosure uh, situation. My whole thing is I don't know how the fuck you plan on giving no non-disclosure form. Uh, even though I think it came out as a joke. But the bottom line is, even if he had been serious, the bottom line of it all is... Shit, we all see it on Bravo and the shit done played the fuck out, so what the fuck was gonna be a non-disclosure for? You should ask Bravo to sign that, just like they probably had y'all sign one. <clears throat> Ooh, that's good. Um, uh, I believe final situation that I was interested in. So, you know, they all throw a little something, and Jackie had been telling her she wanted to get them to come by her joint, check out some shit down to the clinic. She threw a little soiree, a little puss party. And when I say little puss party, they call it uh, the V-Hive puss party. V-Hive my ass. It was a puss party. It was a puss rejuvenation party. For all the ladies that wanted to come out and get a couple of shots, they draw the blood, get the plate to the side of it, some other kind of shit that Jackie discusses and explains to y'all. If you want to know all about it, go down there to her thing and see if you want to get your puss rejuvenated. I think the cost of it is $2,500, but all these bitches got it for free with the exception of this bitch here because she decided to let her mama tell her what the fuck to do. Wouldn't have worked for me. Bottom line is I'm a grown bitch. And me personally, my mama would never tell me no shit like that in the first place. And even if she tried to, just because I still want to get my freak on and make it better in bed and, and, and to let you know I'm grown, I can still do what the fuck I want. I'm going back here and get it plugged up anyway. Stick the puss. Now that shit, what they, they got they got one for the, for, the, for the danglings, for the dicks, but I'm not even doing, I'm not even finna go that fucking route. I'm, 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 I'm straight. I'm good. Trust me. I'm good. Don't need it. But... The puss party was basically everybody coming around get what they call this O shot, which the O shot is supposed to be, you know, like I said, the blood taken from your one vial taken, it's spin, it spin out, they take the plasma or something else from it, and they inject it in the clitoris and around the vagina area somewhere along there. Y'all ask Jackie about it again. She's a professional at it. She done done a little over 100 now. Um, But when Simone was the first one to go back there, it was so funny to see Simone with the big ass teeth back there laughing. It don't be some big ass pretty teeth though, but she's back there laughing her cag off. When what's the name of my it's pressure and shit, baby. They heard her holler all the way from the back. I didn't know she was catching an orgasm, or um, if she was actually feeling some shit because they pasted some numbing cream on the pussy lips and whatnot and on the clitoris, and looked like Dr. Jackie went down there too and rubbed some icing on there on there to numb it a little bit even more. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Some good professionalism. Numb this bitch with, bitch with some cream and then hit it with some fresh ice. Then go ahead and plug me in. By that time, my bee sting, all right, bee sting. Went on here and did everybody, shot everybody up. Everybody talking about how juicy and how they got the wop now. So even heaven, they got her puss injected. But Anita, apparently, because her mother governed her, this chick sat around. First of all, what? Why in the fuck, Anita, did you bring your crazy ass, non, non, uh, probably need to be committed ass, not understanding ass mama down there to some shit like that in the first place. You must have really needed your, you must have really felt like it was coming to an end and your end of the ratings was not what they were supposed to be or what they should have been. So I guess to get your sales up, you decided to do some shit, throw old monkey up in, a monkey wrench up in there, which was your pale ass mama and brought her ass down there to the thing and let her sit up in there act the goddamn fool and talk all that shit to my, she wanted to know if it was a COVID vaccine. Guess what? I told her, yep, it's a COVID vaccine. I'd have went first and I'd have sent her back then when, they, when Eddie got her in the back and told her to drop them old gowns or take them old curtains off or them old blueberry jeans she had on back there and drop them old, uh, uh, them old grandpa, uh, grandmammy drawers and pull them titties up from hanging down to the mothers and told her to live back on that bed, baby. I bet you she'd have fucked around there and died around and up in that back room and come out there hollering, screaming and cussing in all kind of different languages and writing all kind of Arabic shit up on the walls and asking that girl what the fuck was going on back there. 
and tell her how she committed a sin. Then the bitch had to whisper in Jackie and tell her, look, Jackie said, you the last one, you gonna come on through and get your shit done? That bitch, oh, my mama won't let me. And Jackie was like, everybody was like, first of all, bitch, you shouldn't have brought your mammy with you. Second of all, you 43 years old, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You went fuck that man, you went married that man, I bet you ain't had no problem with that as long as you getting that motherfucking money, even though your daddy was some kind of big time rich ass smoker. That's what it is. Her daddy's some kind of big time rich ass smoker. So with the whole bottom line of that, if your daddy wants so much motherfucking say in Kira's house, tell your daddy to give Kira a blank check and give him his list of demands and whatever he missing, tell him to let um, Lil Curtin well go put her list on there too and y'all beat the budget and write a number on that bitch and get it done. They got money, tell them put their fucking piece of the pie up. They the Arabic, Georgia, and Weezy, tell them put <laughs> The Indian, Georgia, and Weezy, fuck. Tell them put their money where their mouth at, because they got a lot of mouth, but they ain't putting them no motherfucking coin. And you a motherfucking fool to let your parents come up in your house without putting them in order to send them in. I don't give a fuck what your religion is. Bottom line is, y'all raised me, y'all grazed me, y'all put me the fuck on out, y'all got me on my own. And the bottom line is, yes, I'm going to make sure he respects y'all, but I got to make sure y'all respect him. This shit got to be money in the middle. But see, them kind of, I, I don't know, they don't believe in that kind of stuff where they from, so I don't know. But if y'all want them old shots, y'all need to go ahead and hit Jackie up. Y'all know Jackie got that skincare line. She got it going over there for $2,599. Real quick, maybe she run a little special for the summer for y'all that want to put the clitoris on, you know, on blast and see if y'all got it for the summertime. Uh, for the winter, if you want to keep y'all, get y'all cooler to keep y'all warm and get them shots up in there, keep yourself warm and go back, go down at the centers or whatever, get your little toy and keep yourself satisfied. Um, you know, shit, if, if you're a little bit older, you feel like it's a little bit colder, you still want to get a groove back, y'all need to go down there and call Jackie because Jackie got the cure to y'all itch, honey. She has what you need. It's called push shots. Pussy shots. Not in Pussy Valley. That's the one thing they come up with in Chuck and Lisa. But I guarantee you probably they live around and get them to get them things lifted back up a little bit more. For some of them ones with this walking around looking like a sad old man. Uh, <laughs> oh, I done seen a few. Yeah, for them ones walking around looking like a sad old man that done lost his puppy, his mama, and his firstborn, and his wife to be, or uh, his wife had to be in, of uh, 56 years, baby. A sad old man. Y'all need to go around and get a, a pussy rejuvenation, go around uh, over at the what's the name, and, and hang your fan over one of them, uh, the, the, some steaming pots, and then go over there to Jackie and let her put some of the old injections up in your own so you can get that old feeling, because that's, that's what Jackie said you're going to have after you get it done. I'm just saying, I'm just advertising. So anyway, that's all I'm going to even fucking talk about with this. I'm, I'm 32 minutes in. I still got to do Atlanta Housewives, and I got to update y'all on Wendy Williams because y'all told me y'all wanted to know what the what's going on and the whereabouts of Wendy Williams, and I got some tea for y'all, child. Um, but check me out in that video, which is coming soon or later than shit, probably tonight or tomorrow, one or the other, depending on how sleepy I am or how hungry I am. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, remember to go ahead and now hit that thumbs up to like. Hit that subscribe button so you get these notifications and these videos when I upload them so you can see them firsthand and be one of the first ones to come in and let me know how you feel about the episode of Marriage to Medicine or the AJ Red Show or any of the other motherfucking shows I have in my portfolio. Go ahead and go back and look at them because if, like, if you like this video, you'll like all the others, I'm pretty sure. For those of you who keep saying y'all cannot hear me, I don't know what in the hell is going on. Listen. I'm going to say it again, like I told my coworker over there at the lab. Listen, Miss Ina, uh, check your battery. Turn that volume up. Turn that volume up. And shout out to Miss Ina over there in the lab, over there down to the job. You know I love you, girl. One of my number one first day supporters. Y'all look, she don't miss a show. She probably sitting up right now waiting. Well, is, this, is this thing going to post something? Yes, Miss Ina, I got you. Shout out, big shout out to Miss Ina. That is my girl. But, um... And for those of you who already subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. Like I said, words cannot even express. But when it comes down to these giveaways I'm about to start giving out, I'm going to be able to express it, yeah, to the biggest uh, supporter. But anyway, share with somebody you know. Share with somebody you don't know. Share with somebody you like. Hallelujah. Share with somebody you don't like. Because if you don't like me, I'm pretty sure somebody else will. I guarantee it. It has not failed me yet. I believe in that shit. And it has not failed. Right? 
Love on yourself. Love on somebody else, but only if they're willing to love on you the same way back. Oh, hallelujah. Anyway, I got to go, y'all. I got to get the hell out of here and get these other videos posted, recorded and posted, so I can keep this thing going. Y'all love yourself. All right, holla.